Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze Lautaro Martinez to determine whether he would be a good fit at Arsenal. So first, we're going to focus on how Lautaro Martinez operated in Inter system under Antonio Conte, then focus on his role playing alongside Lionel Messi, and then see how he could fit in at Arsenal. So ultimately, when you look at that partnership in depth, the roles that they do play in terms of dropping deep and breaking in behind are key. When Lataro does drag Marcus out of position, he does link play well with his teammates, often looking to get his midfielders into attacking positions or looking to get the wing backs forward. Here you could see the ball punted into Lukaku, but focus on Hakimi beginning to make a run forward and Lataro anticipating the flick on just in behind him. Lukaku drags out the center back and Lataro receives the ball at the halfway line dragging out another center back and he identifies Hakimi making a run from his own half in behind. Rather than playing a short pass towards the right wing back, he looks to lob the ball over two Verona players to place Hakimi free down the right channel, and when he clips the ball into that zone, it places the right wing back in a 1v1. Here you can see Barella looking to play a forward pass into Lotaro dropping into his own half, and when Barella plays that pass into Lotaro, he's unmarked in that area, and he locates the run of Hakimi breaking in towards the Roma half towards the halfway circle. Lotaro instantly slides the ball out towards the right wing back, and that's where he's looking to make a forward run in between the lines to run at the back four. But when Hakimi splits the Roma midfield duo, that's when you see Cristante making a challenge from behind, and it's late, and that results in a foul that awards Inter a free kick in Roma's third. But to be fair, majority of his damage is done when Lukaku drops deep to drag out defenders. Lotaro has the ability to break into the channels to create 1v1s and he's able to get himself into good goal scoring positions. From that position, he's able to break in transition, and that's what we often see from Inter when they drop off into a 5-3-2. From an Inter clearance, you could see Lukaku dragging out a Verona center back into his own half, and he flicks the ball towards the left channel, and it's Lotaro who does anticipate it. When the flick-on is played towards the halfway circle, it's Lotaro picking up the ball beyond Temez, and it should force him into a 1v1. However, Tamez does a very good job of tracking the movement of Lotaro as he does carry the ball into Verona's half. And as the play develops, you could see Lotaro in a 1v1 with Tamez as he does recover his position. And towards his right, he could be sliding the ball to Barella, who is breaking towards the box. But Lotaro opts to cut central across Tamez, and this presents a passing option with a reverse ball into Barella making a run into the box. However, Lotaro opts to not play that pass, and from this position, he is closed down by four recovering Verona players. However, while you do think that he should be dispossessed, Lotaro is able to cut across them and fire a low effort on goal that's kicked away. Here you could see another long punt to drag out the Verona center backs, and it's Lukaku winning the ball once again in the halfway circle, and once again focus on Lotaro's movement. When Lukaku flicks the ball on, Lotaro ends up chasing the center back towards goal and from this position, the center back should be clearing danger. However, focus on Lotaro's speed and he chases that ball down and applies pressure to the point where the Verona defender has to make a last ditch tackle, but it's Lotaro using his strength to brush the defender aside and it places him in a 1v1 position at the edge of the box, but when he takes an extra touch, it allows the Verona goalkeeper to come off his line and even from here he should be scoring. But he ends up flicking his effort over the net. And then when you look at Lotaro when Lukaku isn't dropping off deeper, it's simply his movement around the box to get himself into good positions to finish off plays or at the very least test the opposing goalkeeper. Following an inter break, you have Eriksen receiving the ball at the edge of the box, and towards his left, he has Lotaro and Perisic making a run towards left half space. Eriksen slides the ball across Lotaro into the path of Perisic, but focus on Lotaro anticipating that pass and he shifts his movement centrally. When Perisic receives the ball towards the byline, now focus on Lotaro making a run towards the 6 yard box, and as two Milan defenders are dragged out towards the wing back, it creates space for Perisic to pull the ball back to Lotaro, and as you can see, the ball bypasses both of those Milan defenders in Calabria and Kier, and it falls into the path of an unmarked Lotaro as his movement isn't tracked, and he doubles into his lead. As Vecino carries the ball into Udinese's third, Focus on Lotaro's movement across his center back marker who does look to stick tight towards him. 
Vecino slides the ball into the path of Lotaro, and he does a very good job of taking his first touch across the center back, and now he's able to either run at the remaining defenders ahead of him, or he could look to play in Pinamonti. But as another center back does step forward to apply pressure, that leaves Pinamonti free at the edge of the box and you're expecting a pass from Lotaro. But what he does well here is he cuts across the stepping center back and it now places him in a position to get a shot off with his left foot. But he fires an effort on goal that is pushed away. Here you can see Ericsson on the ball with Lotaro and Lukaku occupying two Lazio center backs. And when Ericsson plays the ball into Lukaku, he pulls out a Cherby and he looks to play the ball across him into the path of Lotaro Martinez. Lotaro does well to make the runoff hoot. And what you can see here is the ideal Conte play between the front two. Lukaku pokes the ball into the path of Lotaro, and this should play him in a 1v1 position where he should be scoring. However, as he breaks into left half space, Hoot tracks his movement, and he ends up making a last ditch tackle that takes out Lotaro and concedes a penalty that Lukaku eventually does convert. The other key component to Lotaro dropping off deeper is that he's able to retain possession, hold off the opposing defender that's applying pressure, and win fouls in his own third to help his side push up the pitch or when he's able to evade the challenge and break forward to win a foul in the opposing side's third. From a defensive aspect, Lotaro is integral to Inter and Argentina's pressing from the front, and he is capable of forcing the opposing defenders into mistakes, and when his side drops off into a 5-3-2 or two banks of four, his willingness to track back to apply pressure to the opposing midfielders does help him win possession for his teammates. And then you could look to a time against Crotone, where you have Inter dropped off in their 5-3-2, and the right center back is looking to push forward as Lotaro's caught in the central area. When the ball is shifted out towards him, that's where you see Lotaro shifting over to provide cover, and now you can see the position that he should be in when that right center back pushes forward. But as he carries the ball in towards that zone to deliver a cross into the box, it's Lotaro from a close-up that slides in to block the cross, and it ends up halting the attack of Crotone and Inter are able to regain possession. If you look to this example, you have Barella ahead of Rabio looking to poke the ball into the path of Lotaro, dropping into his own half to drag out Delit. Barella pokes the ball across Rabio into the path of Lotaro, but Lotaro plays a loose return pass in towards Barella, and that's where you see McKenney stepping in to intervene. McKenney pokes the ball into the path of Rabio, but what Lotaro does well here is that he instantly tracks back to get across Rabio, and he applies enough pressure to throw off the Juventus midfielder, and that's how you see Rabio shielding the ball and playing it into the path of McKenney. But Lotaro is persistent, and he makes a slide tackle into the path of McKenney, and that's where you end up seeing Lotaro winning possession to help Inter push forward. If you look to Inter's press from the front, it's Vecino helping out Pinamonti and Lotaro, but both Bonifazi looks to slide the ball across Pinamonti to Wallace who's dropping deeper to make it a 4v3. When Wallace receives the ball, he isn't aware of Lotaro's looking to shift across to close him down, and that results in Wallace taking an extra touch, and that's where you end up seeing Lotaro making a tackle from that position, and as you close in on that moment, it's Lotaro poking the ball away from Wallace to help Inter regain the ball in Udinese's third to help Eriksen get a shot on goal. Meanwhile, when you focus on Argentina, we often saw them playing a 4-3-3, or at times playing a 4-2-2 with Messi. See Justin behind Lotaro, or you ended up seeing Lotaro, Messi, and a Gonzalez front three. But as you can see, there's no Lukaku or natural center forward to link play with Lotaro or create space for him, as you often have Messi dropping off into that midfield zone. And while Gonzalez does look to come in central at times, he's looking to make runs in behind or pick up the ball and dribble at defenders. So while there are times where you do see good work from Lotaro away from the penalty area, he predominantly operates as a poacher in this Argentine system, as he mainly waits for service from Messi, but still his movement around the box is still vital as it allows him to get himself into legitimate goal scoring positions. And he's a willing runner in behind for long balls over the top, and that also presents a threat to the opposition. If you look to another example, it's Pazella carrying the ball towards the halfway line with no pressure applied by the Ecuadorian midfield, and he locates Lotaro's movement in behind. As Pazella plays a long ball over the top, you could see Lotaro spinning off the center back, and from this position, he needs to bring the ball down with his first touch to carry it towards goal, and that could present a legitimate goal scoring position. 
Lataro lets the ball bounce, and you could see the Ecuadorian goalkeeper coming off his line, and from here he has to lob the keeper or push the ball towards his right to put himself in a shooting position. He opts to flick the ball over the keeper, and from this position, you, all he has to do is side foot the ball into the open net, but the Ecuadorian center back does well to cover for his goalkeeper, and when Lataro does look to side foot that ball towards goal, he makes a vital block. Here you could see a short pass being played into Paredes, but focus on Messi being offside and Lataro's movement as he does check in to drag out an Ecuadorian center back. That ball's clipped over the top into the right channel, and you can see Lataro spinning across the center back towards the outside, and that presents him in a position to carry the ball towards goal if he's able to get a good first touch. What you end up seeing is that the Ecuadorian center back does keep pace with Lotaro, and that ends up forcing Lotaro towards the outside in right half space, but still from that position he's able to test the keeper. Therefore, when you focus on Arsenal without them making significant tactical adjustments to their shape, if they do persist with this 3-2-5 in possession, if you want to get the best out of Lotaro, perhaps you need Lacazette playing in just behind him to drag defenders out of position so that he can make runs in behind. Aubameyang can operate in that role as well, but you'd probably prefer Lataro to drop off deeper to hold off defenders to make the most out of Aubameyang in behind, but Aubameyang's also capable of checking into possession and linking play with his teammates. Essentially, that gives Lataro a strike partner up front. He'll still have service from Tierney down the left, and over on the right-hand side, you could rely on Saka or Nicolas Pepe, and then Smith roll from the left to provide creativity. In the bigger games, perhaps Arsenal would revert to an attacking midfielder behind Lotaro, and that perhaps could see Smith throw just in behind him to ensure that Arsenal aren't overloaded in that midfield zone. On the flip side, you can rely on Lacazette to provide that tactical discipline in that role, so perhaps they wouldn't have to make an adjustment there either. Nevertheless, if Arsenal did look to sell Lacazette in this deal, then you would need Lotaro up front, and then you would need three players in behind him that are capable of providing adequate service, while Tierney would serve as an additional creative outlet from the left-hand side. So as you could see, Lotaro Martinez is a hard-working poacher with all-round abilities that simply aren't utilized on a consistent basis for club and country. But if you provide him with a reliable strike partner or multiple creative outlets in the final third, the Argentine is more than capable of succeeding